it carefully, we will see that um, the information that circles around here, it codes for one side of the loop. Um, so it's, it's actually a fractal built out of, uh, it, it codes for one side of the loop, including the turn. Um, so the whole loop is, is made, out, made up by four, four exact copies of the same uh, material, like, like DNA has to code uh, in a fractal manner. You can't encode all the information of how a person looks like in, in the DNA. You can just have a compressed version of it in it. So these loops, they have uh, a compressed, compressed version of the information that is needed to build themselves up. And now the, the screen is it's too small. Uh, there are now cells that are not visible. Um, but I'm, I'm afraid I can't change it, it, it now. But uh, watch what happens when sometimes um, the loops collide. When the loops collide, they are, um, they're coming to existence some uh, combinations of states in the neighborhoods um, that that might, for example, uh, change the information that flows through the loop, or it might also lead to a combination that is considered invalid by the rules, and then this, um, this um, magenta state emerges, which uh, really dissolves the loop, like you see it here. It, it, because it dissolves the loop to make uh, space for other loops that uh, still function. So all the loops that don't work anymore, they dissolve themselves to make space for other loops. And sometimes the loops mutate. This one is smaller now, if you look carefully. This is, this is smaller and has a different shape than this one, for example. And then the mutated versions make copies of, of themselves, of course. And here we see a problem. This loop, all it, the offsprings of this loop, they get smaller by one cell at, at each time. So eventually, these loops will get smaller and smaller and uh, so small that they can't really uh, reproduce anymore. So this has a genetic defect, you could say. <clears throat> um, so, From time to time, um, you will get uh, smaller loops that are able to reproduce. And if, uh, because the loops are smaller, they can reproduce faster. And eventually, the whole space is conquered by the smaller loops. I can, uh, but it really takes some time. And I don't want to waste all the time just here waiting for it. So I'll load a pattern that shows this phenomenon. Yeah, here. here the loops have already grown very small and uh, all the big loops don't exist anymore because they died out. <laughs> yes. So as you can see, this cellular automata, it shows evolutionary effects. Although it's really only local rules and local interaction, but it uh, has really some interesting phenomena. And, but, and now we, we can also, hmm, where is it? Reanimate there. I want to show some effects. Let's have a look at these loops. They don't do anything. Because, I'll just zoom in so we can see it better. Oh, sorry, the wrong one. Okay, we can work with this. Um, 
So, oh, too fast. These loops, they don't do anything because they've lost an essential state that's important for, for growth. And I'll reintroduce it. I'll use some kind of gene therapy here so that it can regain this behavior. I just have to put the red state, state here and watch what it does. It just sits around, but then it travels along with the black state and here, when the green states come along, it introduces a new, um, uh, it grows out of here. No. Perfect, the loop, it works again. It's, it's, it's got a smaller one pixel, but let's see if the next generation does the same mistake? No, it works. This loop they can uh, successfully reproduce and will also conquer the whole space in some time. So we can experiment with these loops a little bit and uh, for example we can say I want it Um, what happens if I introduce two red states, for example? Just fix this here. Um, I put one here, like before. No, not here. This is red. One here. And I'll put another one here. Let's watch it. Of course, it, it makes two copies of itself. It's the same thing, really. <clears throat> so, um, what can you do with this? You can genetically engineer the loops if you want. Um, I'll load another pattern. It's the Sony version of the Evo loop because uh, Sony thought, uh, well, Evo loops, they reproduce by themselves. We can make money with it. Let's just make our own version of it and sell it. Hmm? Yeah, no, it, it, it doesn't contain a rootkit, but it contains digital rights management, as I will show you. Um, so... We have it here. We, know now, we now know what the states mean. Uh, this one is red, here's a red one, here's a red one. So there will be a lot of loops growing and just look what it does. It's a, loop, it's a evil loop, so it makes copies of itself like Sony promised us. <clears throat> and it, also, it even makes four copies of it. Let's make it faster. Works just fine, but now they've introduced some self-destruction. And eventually you don't have anything left, but it worked once. <laughs> Thanks. So. Yeah, the one, one other interesting phenomenon is, um, as I said, the Evo loop, it was uh, created by hand by a scientist. But uh, what happens if we, if we just mutate the rules for the Evo loop? And I have some mutations here. This one is very interesting, I think. Just start with some random noise. Let's see how it grows, okay. Let's make it more oh, clear. Draw some state here. Watch this. Yeah, it's the ubiquitous Sierpinski triangle. Um, but I'm sure you know that uh, it's easy to produce these patterns with cellular automata. 
And uh, so it's not a wonder that they pop up all the time because I have many of these rules. Um, for example, this one is also Sierpinski tri triangle. Yeah, it's, a, it's a nicer one. all sorts of triangles. Oh. Like this. Um, and we can also take this rule and uh, mu continue from here. Make mutations of this one. Um, so I select it. As you can see, this one, it has a different neighborhood. Than the, it has this uh, Van Neumann neighborhood. And let's just make some Random changes. Look what it does. Mm. Um, with this setting here, I can uh, change how many entries in the transition rule I want to change. Now, let's take some more. Mm. Okay, it gets too active. Hmm, this one looks interesting. Um, it's, it's now it's a strange Sierpinski triangle. Let's just take and look at look how it develops. It is just somehow disturbed. Okay. What else can I show you? Mm -hmm. can you which, exact rule is which, which exact rule is used? Oh, I, I don't know, really. I mean, I, I can, of course, look at the rules, but normally you, you, you don't know what, what each rule does. That, that's because the, the, the space of there are so many different rules. It, it would be very hard to create, um, to create them by hand. So uh, I want to use these mutation rules and this regular expression stuff um, to, to automatically generate interesting mutations and then I select it. And I, of course I plan to introduce some automatic uh, features that automatically detect interesting rules, but uh, this isn't done at the moment. I <clears throat> want to show you an, uh, another glider with a completely different, oops. Oh, this is the wrong one. Yeah. Um, with a completely different neighborhood. This is the neighborhood. Um, and there are some interesting phenomena happens. We have them here. Need some more. I'll just copy this one. Hmm. Okay. The mutation I, I uh, loaded is, is one that it's not very active, so I'll just make, uh, take one that's, that's more active where more gliders emerge, but of course they are um, related to each other. This is a mutation of the last rule. And here sometimes the gliders can pass through each other. I hope this works now. Let's watch this. They just pass through each other because the neighborhood is like this. They don't influence each other. All kind of interesting things happen. Okay. Um, so I think you have an idea what you can do with the software. And uh, I'll continue.